Since the passing of Herbert Wigwe, the university in River State, named after him, is still sustaining the legacy of the former chief executive officer of Axis Holdings PLC. Joining us today to discuss inflation and student loans in Nigeria is Professor Miles Davis, founding vice chancellor of the Wigwe University. Good morning, Professor, and welcome again. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good here morning. On the morning show. Happy to be here with you to Good continue to you. discuss the vision of our uh, late chancellor and to let you know what we're doing to continue on the mission that he gave us. Yeah. Excellent. Really great to hear that. So, so how does the rise in inflation impact cost of operations at well institutions of learning generally, and of course, as it must impact your institution in particular? You know, we have to understand what inflation comes from. There, there is often an imbalance in the economy. There's something that's happened that caused it to move, and businesses of all sorts try to recoup their cost. And so you saw a news announcement not long ago where even federal institutions in Nigeria have increased their prices by 100%. The reality, as food prices go up, you have to pay for those food prices going up. As the cost of raw materials go up, you have to pay for those costs of raw materials going up. So inflation will rise and fall. The thing is, how do you maintain a sustainable system to do that? And so our structure is designed to look at a sustainable system so that we're not constantly balancing our budget on the backs of students. And this is a problem both in the U.S. and a challenge in Nigeria because there has to be a way to pay faculty, to keep infrastructure supported, even to take care of the grounds. Unfortunately, I've had the opportunity, well, fortunately and unfortunately, I've had the opportunity to visit some of the federal institutions uh, in Nigeria. And great ideals, great minds that are there. But I look at the infrastructure, and infrastructure is struggling. Uh, and I understand from talking with some of the vice chancellors at these institutions, so I've come to understand that the federal system is paid out of the government for faculty. But a lot of the other things that have to be done have to be supported by the institution itself. How do you cover those costs? And so this is a potential impact on the cost of higher education uh, in Nigeria. And so it becomes important for the institution, uh, the vice chancellor and all those who work with the vice chancellor, to make sure that they are doing their best to not only contain cost, but to look at how else can we possibly generate revenue so that we don't keep passing those costs on to students who may want to pursue higher education but can no longer afford it. Okay, but to, to just put it simply. Yes, sir. Will you at some point be forced to raise school fees at Wigwe University? So now you're discussing the hypothetical. So let me ask you this. Is, does it become at some point necessary to raise taxes in Nigeria? It becomes necessary if the revenue coming in uh, does not meet the expenditures going out. So there is always that possibility, but we will do our best to contain it, and we'll do our best to contain it by making sure that we're exploring other means of revenue so that that does not have to be passed upon the students who are coming into our institution. You know, there's also controversy about university accepting dollars for tuition. Yes. You can, you know, hedge against, you know, the current economic climate and everything. Do, do you want to you know, speak to that as regards, you know, what was that controversy about? Yeah, so this, this to me is uh, an issue that has been settled on two different levels. The Central Bank of Nigeria has said, this is what you have to do. Yes. So, so there's no longer a controversy about this anymore. Uh, other thing is that our board of trustees, and we have a, an amazing board of trustees, and we had a conversation that said, what are universities doing around the world? And so Wigwe University wants to be uh, an Ivy League-like institution. It, wants to, it, it aspires to be a great institution in the world. So if you look at Oxford, if you look at Harvard, if you look at the Sorbonne, when you apply to the institutions, you're paying in euros, you're paying in British pounds, or you're paying in dollars. They don't do two separate things. And so the Board of Trustees said, let's just settle this matter. We'll set the price in Nigeria. And we have to find other ways to hedge against this other than trying to 
control the system. So it's only in Nara. Only in Nara. Only in Nara. Right. So and um, thanks for breaking that down. Yes. Now teachers had to be paid well. Yes. We've seen examples yes. from um, nations around the world who've gotten it right. Yes. And um, part of that is that is, is money. Is, is money used to reward them? Would you? Is it fair then to say that quality education in itself is expensive? You know, this this is an interesting question. I, I was having a uh, conversation uh, about uh, one of the states here who's developing a manufacturing plant, and they're able to uh, make these incredible. Um, purses after particularly designer. I don't want to give anybody free advertising on your show. Uh, but quality ultimately costs money. Uh, there are different degrees of quality. And so do I believe that you can get a quality education at a reasonable price? Let me state unequivocally yes. I am the product of a community college. In, in the United States, you can go to a community college, which is basically a state-funded institution, and tuition is very minimal. But it gave me a foundation because I could not afford to go to the more expensive college. Bringing this directly back to your question, that's quality education expensive? I think that there are things that go along with quality education that can make it expensive. So you have to, again, provide money not just to pay faculty, because that is what we focus on, because that is the nature of the institution, which is faculty. But there's a whole substructure that has to support an institution. So for instance, at our campus, we have holographic image projection that allows us to bring in lecturers from around the world. Well, there's one price for the lecturer, but there's another price for the infrastructure that supports that. So you have to have high quality uh, uh, operation, a high quality Wi-Fi to Internet, support that, yeah. to have that. And you have to have it sustainable because you cannot be doing a lecture and in the middle of the lecture, it cuts off. Cuts off the whole you cuts you off. cannot do this. Yeah. And so, so this contributes to the cost of doing business. And so you have to factor that in to your business model, what it is that you're doing. Yeah. Well, the Biden administration in the U.S. is forgiving about 153 billion in student loans, completely written off. They are warning signs for Nigerians' uh, loan program because we're talking about students' loans here too. So I smile at this because, quite frankly, and so let me get my bias out, and then you can filter whatever I say after that. After I get my bias out, this is a mistake. And let me tell you why I think that what is happening in the U.S. is very different than what is happening in Nigeria. First of all, the U.S. has the lowest saving rate of any developed country. Uh, they don't save. We don't save. And I'll say that because um, my, my identities are a bit mixed up now because I, I enjoy being in Nigeria and feel very much a part of the culture, but also realize that I'm not from Nigeria. And so that's important to recognize. And then when you look at where the debt is, so I, I, ha I share this with people all the time. And they don't realize it. If you look at people who have student loan debt, if you look at people who have auto loan debt for buying new cars, the auto loan debt is 286% higher for auto loans than student debt. But we don't talk about forgetting auto loan debt. Investment in education is the best investment you can ever make because you cannot talk about debt unless you talk about the return on the investment. And so, as I mentioned, I was born in a, in a poor family. My family did not have money. The money that I spent to go to school has allowed me to live a very different lifestyle. It was worth the debt that I had, so it was an investment. And so what I say to Nigeria is this, is that first of all, Nigerians have a higher savings rate. It's hard to believe this. I know when I tell people this in the States, the Nigerians have a higher saving rate because so much is of, of a cash economy here, more so than the United States, which is very much credit economy. The high debt in the U.S. comes from graduate studies in what we call for-profit institutions. Um, and, I, and I have direct experience with this because my son went to law school. So law school in the United States is a graduate program. And it's, it's not an undergraduate program, it's a graduate program. And my son has debt. And he has what we consider a lot of debt from that. But my son is making an incredible amount of money. Now, some may say that my son, because he chose a particular path and he chose to do certain things, are worth it. He's an outlier. He's, he's an outlier, and we, we've had this conversation because he's doing very well. But when I look at the people who have spent money, uh, doctors, the lawyers, uh, professionals uh, who are 
spent their money on graduate education. It is money well spent. And so what Nigerian students have to realize and what the Nigerian economy has to realize is where do you make your investment? And I'll put on one small thing, if I may, that, that I would like to see considered. When I went to school, now I say like I'm like my father. It's like back in the day when I went to school. But when I went to school, uh, instead of loans, the government provided grants for students to go to school for those who are under privilege. Uh, and then the loans were subsidized so that they were beneath market rates. And this is an important point because the U.S. lifted that. The U.S. Congress lifted that and said, we're not going to subsidize it anymore. And so what Nigeria has to decide is how important is education to the economy and how are we going to manage that from a regulatory and governmental and a banking perspective. But we also, so, so when people see that what we've done is provided, we do provide loans for people that you can go to, well, actually university is actually done through Access Bank, that they can go and because pay. Because they have loans where you can go to uh, Google University through Access Bank. Yes, and you can okay. pay in, and, and you can pay in installments okay. uh, for the first semester and the second semester. Uh, because often cash flow is an issue. Uh, some, some people may not have the uh, 8,000 naira, uh, 8 million naira, excuse me, I wish it was 8,000 naira, 8 million naira off the top of their uh, head. Or they can't just reach in their pocket, but if I can sp sp spread it out, mm -hmm. I can be able to make it work. Yeah. And so that makes sense. But I say this to everyone, it's no different than any budget that you have to have in your household. You know, how much can I outlay and what's the return? And, and I want to be clear about this. We welcome everybody to Wigway University. And we offer things to make it attractive. And we even set up scholarship programs for those who are underprivileged. But, but we will do our best to outreach yeah. to those. So, so the country is in the loss of uh, Herbert Wigway. How is the university structured to, you know, to move forward, uh, to create the leaders of tomorrow? And uh, speaking about the leaders of tomorrow, the skill pipeline in this country. What's yeah. your take on that? Yeah. So the, the university is structured as consistent with NUC guidelines. So it had to be set up to be sustainable. In order to get a provisional license, uh, the NUC had to say, OK, you have the proper structure in place. But more importantly is all organizations are composed of people. We tend to forget that sometimes. So you have to bring in the right people in order to make sure that you're running and we have wonderful staff, we have wonderful faculty uh, who are committed to the vision. And quite frankly, uh, with the passing of our, uh, of our chancellor, have rededicated themselves to make sure that this happens at all costs. Mm -hmm. the, 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 other, the other piece of that is to make sure that we're doing things to engage and people to make it an opportunity for them, such as doing something that you would not think about as being part of academics, such as having a mascot challenge. We've done a mascot challenge where we allow people to draw and design the mascot for us, and then the winner of that mascot challenge will get to attend the university on scholarship for the four years they're there. And so we're doing things to engage people in a different way. Thank you. Well, on that note, we'd like to thank you very much, thank, Professor thank Davis. Thank you. And thank you. wish you all the best with the Wigway University. Thank you. Thank you very much.